Welcome to our Gold Derby Film International Feature Panel. I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby, here with Paolo Sorrentino, director of The Hand of God from Italy, Maria Schrader, director of I'm Your Man from Germany, Jan Matuszynski, director of Leave No Traces from Poland, Tatiana Hueso, director of Prayers for the Stolen from Mexico, and Ali Muritiba, director of Private Desert from Brazil. Um, first of all, I'm so thrilled to have all of you here. Um, everyone's from such different backgrounds. And one of the first questions I'm, I'm just curious, since everyone's uh, from a different area, what inspired you first to become a filmmaker? Um, was there a specific director or even an actor or a film that you saw as a child that inspired you to want to get into making movies? We'll start with Paolo. Che devo spegnere? No, niente, vai. Ho deciso di diventare regista perché fra tutte le arti che vedevo mi sembrava quella che eh, necessitasse di minore preparazione. Eh, questa è la verità. I decided to become a filmmaker because among all the arts I saw, it seemed to be the one that required the least amount of preparation. Um, that's the truth. <laughs> that seems hard to believe, but um, Maria, how about you? What was, what was your experience? Um, I wanted to become an actor and I became an actor. And uh, from a very early age on, I didn't finish school, I went to the theater and that is what I wanted to be on stage and film was very, very far away for me. And um, then I was very inspired by a film called Moliere by Ariane Nushkin. I saw it when I was probably 18 years old and she bridged theater and film. And um, then I became an actor in films and only by writing my own parts. And I only wanted to write these parts to be acting. And then I became more and more interested in making it all myself. <laughs> Jan, how about you? Well, um, you know, I remember when I was a little, little, very small kid, like three or four, and my parents took me for the first time to the cinema to see a very bad film, I think, Shortcuts 2, which is kind of a remake of Pinocchino, but, you know, there's a robot and he's like fighting all the bad guys and so on and so on. And in the final scene, he dies, which practically means that his battery is just off. And I remember I cried, I cried my tears out <laughs> that hard that I didn't realize that in the next scene, he's got a new battery and he's of course alive. And when we got out of the cinema, my mother told me that and I said, oh, okay. And after a couple of years, I realized that that was like the, the first, you know, huge emotional experience. And now when I think what, why I'm doing, what I'm doing is that, yeah, I want to bring that kind of emotion to the big screen and talk to people after the screening. That's, you know, wonderful. You can, you know, create, you can set up your own worlds and it's, it's marvelous. And Ali, how about you? Bom, eu, na verdade, nunca imaginei que fosse me tornar um, um cineasta. Eu era um agente penitenciário cansado de trabalhar na penitenciária quando decidi que precisava conhecer gente nova que não fosse preso. <risos> e isso aconteceu... E, e, nesse momento, estavam criando uma faculdade de cinema no lugar onde eu vivo. E eu pensei, vou estudar cinema porque, com certeza, as pessoas que fazem cinema são muito diferentes das pessoas que estão presas. E na faculdade de cinema eu entendi que eu era um bom contador de história e eu diria que o cinema me tirou da cadeia. I never thought that I would become a filmmaker. I used to work in a prison and I was just tired of working and I realized that I needed to meet new people, people that were not arrested or in jail. Um, and they were at that time creating or coming up with a, a school for film, a university near my city. And I figured, oh, this is a place where I could find people that are not in jail and, you know, connect with other people. And during my time there, I realized, I understood that I was a storyteller. And I would say that film kind of got me out of jail. 
Wow. And how about you, Tatiana? Bueno, yo debo decir que me enamoré del cine en frente de una pantalla. Eh, mi madre no tenía con quién dejarme, quien me cuidara. Ella es una mamá que me crió sola y ella amaba a ir cada año a la muestra de cine que había en México en la Cineteca Nacional. Um, I have to say that I fell in love with uh, cinema in front of a screen. Uh, my mom, she uh, she wasn't able to, uh, to take care of me sometimes, and she she raised me by herself. So sometimes she wasn't able to take care of me, and she loved going to the National um, Cinemateca for their festival. Eh, y entonces me metía de contrabando y a la edad de ocho, diez años. Vi películas que fueron para mí una sacudida, este, eran unos viajes intensos, emocionales y sensoriales muy profundos que me marcaron y yo decía esto es algo muy poderoso y lo único que yo quiero hacer en la vida es poder hacer sentir a alguien más esto que estoy sintiendo yo. So I would get I would get into into the the theaters. I would sneak in and I would watch at the age of eight, ten years old, uh, uh, films that really shook me. They took me on these really intense sens uh, sensatorial and emotional journeys. And I thought, this is what I have to do. I have to be able to do this. This is what I want to do. Y las películas que me marcaron en aquella época fueron de David Lynch como Terciopelo Azul. Este, Alicia en las ciudades de Bim Benders, o El miedo que devora las almas, es una película que se quedó mucho tiempo adentro de mi alma. And some of the films that, that really marked me the most was, of course, uh, David Lynch's, there's one from Bim Benders, uh, The Fear That Devours the Souls, which really just um, was impressed in, in, in my soul. And another question I'm just always curious about is um, in terms of, you know, what it means to you to be a filmmaker and representing a country that um, you're representing and being selected um, in this process to represent um, just one film for each country for Oscar consideration. What do you hope to represent for your country and, and what do you hope people take away from seeing your film. We'll start with Paolo. Um, spero di riuscire a comunicare nel mondo uh, a, a far capire che il mio paese è un paese molto vitale. Penso che il mio film sia uh, pieno di, di vita e questa sia una caratteristica del nostro paese. E spero che venga fuori e che possa essere conosciuta e apprezzata da tutti. Um, what I hope I can communicate to the world is that uh, my country is a very lively country. Um, I think that my film is full of life and I think this is a characteristic of our country and I hope that this um, comes out and I hope this is a characteristic that can be known and appreciated by all. And Maria, how about you? It's, um, it's an interesting question for me because I, um, I worked a lot abroad. My first movie I shot in, uh, not even in German, in Israel. My second movie I shot in New York and um, in very different, in seven languages. And, um, and it represented Austria in the Oscar race <laughs> because it was a co-production. And then with Unorthodox, it's, it's a series which is never, which is not even being recognized as a German series, and it's in English and in Yiddish. So I'm your man. It's actually it's the first movie I do in my own language and only in German. And I never thought about what does it represent. You know, I'm now representing Germany. I always considered myself as a traveler and uh, I went where the stories were I was interested in and I think I always seek for um, different perspectives and um, rather 
opening opening points of views and perspectives and maybe it's it's beautiful now that i'm your man represents germany which maybe internationally is is looked at a very you know earnest a very it's nice to represent germany with 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 a comedy <laughs> with a playfulness mm. and a lightness and um and also with an with a main actor who's not german so also with an international appeal maybe and jan how about you you know it's uh it's like olympic games in a way it's an honor to represent <laughs> the country that's like first thing i i feel. and i and i'm really honored yeah that's that's nice that's that's a great uh, thing for a director because you can uh, talk to other, you know, nationalities, other countries uh, with your film. I believe, especially now after you know all the COVID situation and so on, cinema is one of those things that makes people think that they are not alone. And with, with a story like uh, "Leave No Traces," uh, I have a feeling that it can work uh, everywhere. And cinema is like a proper uh, way of putting it out there. So uh, it's a great place to be, I have to say. And I am, especially with this one, I'm very interested. Uh, how will people react uh, when we had our Polish premiere? I was quite surprised that people came with their kids. So I had like a 50 something year old uh, woman with her daughter or son who was around 15 and they talked about the film. And I thought that I had this feeling that they're not, not talking about Polish films, just a film. And cinema is this tool that, you know, can uh, cut out all the borders. And this is so, uh, so great because we all care about freedom, right? Yeah, Ali. Bom, é, representar o Brasil com um filme queer é, que fala de amor é, nesse momento em que o país é, é comandado por um fascista é, é, é um testemunho, é um manifesto do, do cinema brasileiro de que nós acreditamos muito que as nossas histórias e que as nossas histórias de amor é que devem ser contadas. Nos últimos anos, eh, no exterior, as notícias que se tem do Brasil são sempre muito ruins, são sempre muito negativas. A Amazônia está sendo destruída, os direitos humanos estão sendo destruídos, a fome aumenta, a desigualdade social aumenta. E aí, nesse momento, mostrarmos para o mundo um Brasil de amor, de tolerância, de beleza, um Brasil que dança, um Brasil que sorri, um Brasil que se enamora e se apaixona é, é um manifesto de que o nosso país é muito melhor do que o governo que está aí. Uh, to be representing Brazil right now with a queer film, a movie about love, especially in this moment where our country is being presided by a fascist president, um, it's really a testament to Brazilian cinema and our love stories and how they deserve to be told. And um, I feel like news, international news, when they're about Brazil recently, they're mostly bad. They're about the Amazon being on fire and human rights problems. And people in Brazil are more poor, more hungry, more unhappy. And to bring this movie that is about how Brazil loves and dances and smiles and about the beauty and tolerance that our country also has it just it's a testament and it shows that brazil is so much more than this government right now and tatiana okay yo también me siento muy orgullosa de que sea prayers for the stolen noche de fuego que represente a mexico pienso que eh, el cine tiene justamente es, es un puente y tiene ese poder de acercarnos eh, de acercarnos a otras realidades y esta película es una ventana para mirar una de las realidades difíciles que hay en México, una realidad urgente eh, de atender. Eh, pienso que es una película que habla también de la rebeldía y de la magia y del profundo amor y lealtad que existe en esa etapa de la vida que es la infancia y que también de alguna manera, y creo que esto es universal, es un homenaje a la ferocidad del amor maternal, 
de tantas mujeres en Latinoamérica y muchas partes del mundo que están criando solas a sus hijas y dándoles herramientas para ser más libres. I'm also very proud to be representing uh, Mexico with prayers for the stolen. I feel like cinema is uh, is a bridge. It's a bridge that brings us closer to other realities. In this case, it's a difficult and urgent reality that we're going through in Mexico. But at the same time, it's also about the rebelliousness, the loyalty, the love of this um, of this stage in life of childhood. And at the same, and it's also an homage to the ferociousness of a mother's love of 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 mothers throughout the world that are that are, that are giving the tools to their children that are raising their children on their own and are giving them the tools to be more free well i'm so thrilled to have had the five of you all together representing such beautiful diverse stories from all over the globe Thank you for um, joining this panel and working out ways to all communicate with each other so we could have this great discussion and, and learn from each other. Um, I'm gonna ask all of our viewers to keep coming back to Gold Derby for more interviews with inspiring panels and awards contenders. And congratulations to each and every one of you on this panel uh, for your fantastic films this year. Thank you. Thank you.